Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We got another exciting lesson for you all today. So I hope you're excited and ready to build some more games. So this week we've been looking at physics in gaming. We looked at acceleration and velocity. We discussed the differences between them. And then in the last video, we looked at a very specific type of acceleration, which was gravity. Today, we're looking at physics in a slightly reverse way. Today, we are looking at bouncing physics. So how do you make an object bounce in a realistic or even a cartoonish way? We're gonna go over both of those today. So first thing I want you to do is to go ahead and create a new program. Oh, don't forget to make sure that you're signed in. If you do not see your picture or initials in that top right corner, you better fix that and go ahead and sign in now. So I'm gonna call my program Bouncing Man. because We are going to make a man bounce, woohoo. Okay, so first thing I need to do to get started, I need to create my man, and I'm also going to create a trampoline. And we can go ahead and name those. So we're going to create a man that bounces on a trampoline. I know that doesn't sound super exciting, but we can always add to this program and make it a lot more fun. Trust me, there's a lot we can do with this once we're done. All right, so as always, you can create your own images. I'm just gonna grab a dude from the gallery to keep this going quickly. For my trampoline, there isn't really a trampoline in here, so I just need something long and flat. Oh, okay, we'll make him jump on the couch. That'll work. So my trampoline is a couch. Okay, so the kinds. This is going to come in handy because we're gonna be using overlap codes today, and overlap codes only work if they have their own unique kinds. So the player will remain as the player. The couch, we're going to change. There's not really a kind here that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new kind. And what should I call this? A, I'm gonna call it a bounce pad for the kind. And notice I capitalized the word pad, so it was a little easier to read. Okay, so I've created a man who is a player kind and a trampoline, which is a bounce pad kind. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and set up their positions. Um, they're both spawned in the middle of the screen. I want the bounce pad to actually be down near the bottom of the screen. So let's go ahead and set up its position right quick. I don't need to change its X position. I just need to change its Y position. So we will give it a Y position of, actually, you know what, zero, zero. I messed myself up there. Let's not use that block. Let's use the set block. That way I don't have to worry about the X. So we're going to set the trampolines Y to near the bottom of the screen. The bottom of the screen, remember, once again, is... You thought I was going to tell you, didn't you? You should know this by now. What is the Y position of the bottom of the screen? It is 120. So instead of using 120, I'm going to use a number slightly smaller than that. Let's use 110. That way there's at least a little bit of a gap there between the couch and the bottom of the screen. There we go. All right, I got my man. He is ready to bounce on that couch. Let's do this. Okay, so I need to, before I can bounce anything, I need to give my man gravity. He's not falling yet. So let's go ahead and give my man some gravity here. So we are going to set man, and we are grabbing, remember, get, get, uh, remember gravity is acceleration in the Y direction. So we're going to give him gravity in the y direction, we're going down. So is that positive y or negative y? That is positive y. Now, how strong you decide to give it is really up to you. I think we did 50 in the last game, so I'm gonna do 50 again here, but of course you can make it stronger or slower. Okay, let's see that. So he is falling, not a bad speed. He is falling. So let's go ahead and keep working on this. So I'm noticing a couple things we can talk about in a minute but let's go ahead and get the bouncing going. So in order to make the man bounce on the couch, we need to give him an overlap code. I know it's been a little while since we've used these, so I hope you remember how they work. They're in the sprite section. We're gonna scroll down in the sprite section to where it says overlaps, and this is the block we're looking for. On sprite of kind player overlaps with other sprite of kind player. We're going to change that, of course, so that it is the other kind, the bounce pad kind. So now we've got the beginning of our overlap code. When a sprite of the kind player overlaps with another sprite of kind bounce pad. So when they touch, what do we need to happen? Well, we need the player to bounce up. 
So here's the part where we get to the new coding, the things that we haven't done yet. How are we going to make that bouncing work? So let's think about what we learned with gravity, right? We learned that when an object goes thrown up in the air, it, we give it a velocity, it goes up and up and up, eventually the velocity equals zero, and then it comes back down and it has a new velocity falling, right? So my, my player right now, he started with a velocity of zero, if you noticed here. He starts with a velocity of zero, but then he falls. So he hits the couch and he has a velocity when he hits that couch. Now exactly what the velocity is when he hits the couch, I'm not sure, but he has velocity as he's falling. He has positive velocity because y, positive y is down when we're talking about JavaScript. So he has velocity, he hits the couch, we want him to bounce back up. Basically, we need his velocity to change directions. He's falling, he has a positive velocity, he hits the couch, and as soon as he does, we need that velocity to change from the downward direction to an upward direction. We need the number, whatever his speed is, when he hits that couch, we need the, the sign to change is what we need. We need the sign to change. So it is a positive number and we need it to become a negative number. Think to what you know about math class, a little bit of math in this one, not much. Think about what you know in math class. Think about what you learned when it comes to multiplying positive and negative numbers. If I need a positive number, because that's his velocity, to suddenly become a negative number, what do I have to do to it? Keep in mind, I don't know what the number is. It could be positive 50, it could be positive 30, it could be positive 70. I don't know what his speed is when he's sitting on the couch, but I need it to become the exact same number opposite. What do I have to do? What math do I need to do to change his direction. So I'm going to grab the sprite section and I'm going to go to set. I'm going to, when they overlap, we're going to set the man's velocity in the y direction to a new value. And that new value is going to be, if you haven't figured it out yet, it's multiplication. I'll give you a little hint there. His new velocity, we need to change directions. His new velocity is going to be equal to, we're using this bubble to grab a stat, his old velocity, vy. So we're going to set his new velocity, his new vy, to, I need to change the name there. There we go. So we're going to set the man's vy to whatever his vy was times, now what do I need to put here to change it from a positive number to a negative number? What do I need to multiply it by? I hope you figured it out by now. The number is negative one. Whenever you multiply anything by negative one, it changes signs. So if his speed was 10 and you multiply it by negative one, it becomes negative 10. If his speed was 40, it becomes negative 40. If it's 60, it becomes negative 60. Look at our program, it's already working. We have a bouncing man. He is bouncing. It is very fortunate. It is very happy. All right, it's a little hard to see his legs, so maybe I should give it a background color so we can see him a little bit better. We'll go with this beige color here. There it is. We have our bouncing man. That's pretty cool. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, so we have a realistic bounce. That's awesome. This is exactly what we're looking for. Actually, hold up, pause. Is this the realistic bounce? I want you to notice that when he gets back up to the top, he's in the same spot he was when we started. Let me refresh. Notice how when he gets to the top of the bounce, he's going back to the same place he started from. And this will happen no matter where we put him. If we change his starting position, let's set the man's starting position, his, his starting Y to zero. We'll put it all the way at the very top of the screen. So now he's going to start at the very top of the screen and he falls and he falls and he falls. He hits the couch and he bounces right back up to the top of the screen, right? Okay. So 
the bouncing is working. It is doing what we want it to do. The problem is, well, it doesn't, maybe it isn't a problem. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. The observation is that he's coming back up to the same height he started from. Now, why is that happening? It's because when he started, he had a velocity of zero. He's falling, falling, falling. He's hitting the bounce pad. We're changing his velocity to a negative number. He goes back up with that same speed. And as he goes up, gravity pulls him down, just like we learned about in the last video. Gravity pulls him down. He gets to the top and he comes back down. So it's going back up to the same height as where it started because it's moving the same speed. That's why. It's just because it's the same speed. When the positive hits and it switches, it's the same speed. So it goes up and it takes the same amount of time for gravity to slow it down as it took for it to speed him up. So gravity is affecting him the same way going up as it did going down. So it's taking away the energy that it added when he fell. That's the best way for me to explain it. So gravity is taking away his energy that it added when he fell and it's balancing out and it's equaling. All right, so let's talk about the real world. In the real world, if I have a bouncy ball, even if it's the best bouncy ball in the world, super rubber, super bouncy, whoop, my program suddenly bugged. Sometimes that does happen, not very often, but it does occasionally happen. Okay, so let's say I have a bouncy ball. It is the best bouncy ball in the world. It's super bouncy. And I drop it. And that ball falls and it hits the floor and it bounces back up. Is the ball going to bounce back into my hand? If I'm holding it, I drop it, the ball falls, it bounces, it comes back up. Is it going to come right back to my hand? Have you ever bounced a bouncy ball before? Or anything that's bouncy? Does it ever come back up all the way to where it started? The truth is no. Even the most efficient, the best bouncing balls in the world are not gonna come all the way back to where they started. Do you know why? It's because some of that energy that it had gets lost when it hits the floor. It gets lost, it could get lost as a vibration, it could get lost as heat or sound, but some of the energy gets lost when it hits the floor, right? It's also why certain floors bounce better than others. If you bounce something on hardwood floor, it tends to bounce pretty well, but if you bounce it on um, carpet, it's not gonna bounce very well at all because all that energy basically gets lost on the carpet. So yes, when the ball hits the floor, some of the energy is lost. And the remaining energy brings it back up, but it's not gonna come back up to where it started. If you're lucky, your ball might come up 80% of the way, maybe 90% of the way if it's a really good ball, but you're not gonna get a full 100% back to where it started because some of that energy is lost. So the bounce that we have here, this code that we have here that is creating our bounce works great if we don't mind the fact that it's not super realistic. Sometimes with games, it is okay to not be super realistic. This is what I would call cartoon physics, if that makes sense, right? This is the way physics works in cartoons. It's the way physics works in a lot of video games. It's not super realistic. If you're playing a game like Doodle Jump, the bouncing isn't going to be super realistic, but it is still fun to play, right? So if you're looking for just a fun, good bounce, multiplying by negative one is a good way to do that. If I wanted it to be realistic, I would have to change it from negative one to a number that is less than one, but still negative. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna change it from negative one to negative 0.8. So I'm putting a decimal and eight. This will give me that 80% that I was talking about earlier. So let's watch what happens to him now. He bounces and every time, oh, it bugged. Let me restart it. So it bounces, and every time he bounces, he loses a little bit of energy. So he's only bouncing up 80% as high each time. And that gives you a more realistic type of bounce. Is it a more fun bounce for a video game? Probably not. For a game that uses bouncing physics, you probably want to go the cartoony route. You probably don't want to go with super realism. But if you wanted to, if your game is gonna be super realistic, multiplying by a number less than one will give you that realism. I use 0.8, you might prefer 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. I probably wouldn't go lower than five. That's about as low as I would go for a bounce. Cause five gives you half the way. If you're gonna go less than that, 
It's kind of like why even bother bouncing, right? So, hmm, that didn't work very good. There we go. So that's a fifty percent bounce. Yeah, it's not. It's 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 got some bugs. So typically, I would go probably 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 if I was doing a realistic bouncing game. But most of my games don't use realistic bouncing. Most of my games use a negative one. And that gives you the full, the full bounce. Okay, so now that we have a working bouncing and it's working the way I want it to, it would not be hard to change this into an actual game. My, my recommendation would be to simply move the trampoline. So every time it bounces, we could change its position. And I'll just use where it says other sprites. And then I can put some random blocks in here and I can decide what range I want to use. Do I want it to be for the full size of the screen? Um, do I only want it to appear at a certain spot, spots within, this, within the game? So instead of the X being zero to 10, the whole size is 160. So maybe I want to do 10 to 150. So I give it a little bit of space there. And then for the Y, I probably don't want to go too high up. So instead of starting all the way up there, maybe I want to start at 50 and go down to 150. So now I have the beginning of a game. Nope, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? What am I missing, guys? Oh, wise doesn't go to 150, it goes to 120. So we're gonna take off 10 for that and let's make it 110. There we go. Oh, but I didn't give the player controls, so I should probably do that too. So I'll just grab some controls in here for the man. And I only want him to move left and right. I don't want him to be able to walk up or down, so I'm gonna change the VY to zero. And now I have the beginning of a simple bouncing game where I can move left and right. And my goal is simply to find, ooh, to find the pad. So of course, there's still a lot of edits that you could make to this game. A lot of things could change. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and stop the video here. This is a good starting point. Feel free to edit this game. Maybe you want to keep it similar to this, but give him points when he hits the couch. Maybe you want to create some obstacles or enemies for him to avoid. Maybe there's something else you want to change, right? So feel free to customize this game some more. If you decide to make it into a game, I would love to see it. So please make sure you hit that share button up here. Name your game, share the project, copy the link, and post it in the comments of this video so I can see your games. All right, if you learned something new today, please hit that like button. If you are not already following us, please go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about this channel so we can all have fun building games together. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.